Hey everybody, Darren Cross here. Welcome to week nine of Business 134, Managing Diversity. Um, this week, we're actually talking about communicating in a diverse environment. This is kind of where the rubber hits the road. So up till now, we kind of been thinking about the inside part of this, right? So what's going on with us? What's going on with our perspective? What's going on with our diversity consciousness? What are, we, what are our biases? What do we think? And now we're digging into how we actually are going to let this come out in a world where there are different philosophies and and upbringings and backgrounds and uh and worldviews and things like that and so this is this is kind of um, where the rubber hits the road right so the specific learning objectives that we're going to be focused on uh over the course of the next two weeks are these so we're going to discuss how communication and culture interrelate so obviously you understand that we kind of communicate differently in different cultures um and it's not uh sometimes sometimes we don't understand each other at all just by virtue of the the jargons and the idioms that we use and things like that um and so we're going to talk about those things we're going to elaborate on the implications of electronic communication so what happens now when we're actually communicating via um via text message or via uh online social media or something like that um relate to the importance of communication to each of the six areas of developments uh, of development of diversity consciousness so we're going to relate these things back to diversity consciousness summarize why, why communication matters obviously it matters we're, this is where we're um what's what's inside of us is coming out in a world where we're trying to mesh together okay uh point out the impact of barriers to effective communication of course we've talked about that stuff you've talked about that stuff in different classes um and so uh that's going to be important analyze the impact of microaggressions on communication so microaggressions are those things that perhaps we um on the basis of the way that we are accustomed to uh, get along in the world, we are talking, but then other people are taking that as in a certain way. And um, you know, there there might be some uh, debate on whether it's actually a microaggression. In, in other words, did you really? Did I really intend to be aggressive there? But it was just kind of small by virtue of the little portion of the words that I did use, or is it just? Um, you know, I wasn't aware of how people were thinking about that, right? So there's a debate about that, and that's that's something that we're actually going to talk about um, this week in our discussion board. Um, explain why the ground rules for difficult dialogues are necessary. We're going to talk about that. If we are um, communicating, what happens when people just are just riled up is they're no longer communicating. They're actually just saying things. If we set ground rules, we can keep people facing each other and we can keep people actually having those conversations. And we are going to um, elaborate on the importance of communicating inclusively. So what that really means is um, we communicate in a way that people feel like they are a part of the conversation. Um, and that is tough. I can tell you for someone who is conscientious about um, the, the complexity of teams and getting teams to work together, um, you find that because I'm just used to relying on the way that I've been brought up to communicate, that sometimes the words we say or the things we say or the things we don't say, or um, and it could be as simple as saying, um, hey, we are going to do this instead of you are going to do this, right? Or it's it could be like um, one of the things that I thought was kind of silly when I very first started teaching, uh, when someone brought this up to me, is I would say, all right, guys, here's what we're going to do. And people would say, well, guys, that really kind of maybe implies that you don't mean women also. Um, or, you know, I often talk about business owners and things like that. And one of the things that we tend to do as humans is we, when we're given an example, we put an example of what the profile of the person uh, that we might be speaking about, right? So I'll say, a CEO, if a CEO is uh, leading his organization, right? But really, that could be his or her. And perhaps if 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 women are inundated with his, 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 he, 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 all the time, then maybe that's exclusive. Maybe that's not. Uh, maybe th that language is just inherently not inclusive, right? Um, so you know, those types of things are important, and that's really what we're going to be digging into. I think the 
uh, discussion board for this week is pretty interesting, uh, but dig into everything. And if you have any questions at all, reach out to me. Good luck, everyone.